The scripture that we have been standing on in this series is Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, so do not fear. Yep. Elbow your neighbor and say, do not fear. Don't fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And this whole series, we've been talking about getting stronger in Jesus. How many of you know that when we talk about getting stronger, we automatically think about physical muscles, right? But we've been talking about getting stronger in Jesus. We started off talking about how it is okay to ask for help. It's okay, it's a good thing to be able to say, in my own strength, I'm not enough. I need you, Jesus. We've been talking about how to embrace that weakness because his grace is what? It's sufficient. sufficient. It's more than enough. So in our weakness, his power is made perfect in the midst of that. And last week, we talked about how choosing courage is so valuable, not just comfort. And today we have one final layer. We do have one final. Stronger in Jesus. We do have one final layer. We're actually gonna invite to the stage a couple who's a power couple on our team. They serve on our pastoral team, our executive team. Can y'all make some Hope City noise and welcome pastors Brandon and Kristen Barber to the stage. Let's go. We love y'all so much. The barbers, you walked out here in this minty green shirt trying to show me up. Let's go, it's nice strong. Shirt. Like dancy nice. Like bland. Yeah, like it, okay. <laughs> so for those of you who are maybe not familiar with the barbers, uh, serve as our community pastors. We're a church from neighborhoods to nations. So anything missional, anything that we do in our city around the nation or the globe, it funnels through their pastoral leadership. We have some amazing outreach directors and Anthony and Michelle Miner. Can we make some noise for them as well? Yeah. And everybody, Vic and Ashton and so many that serve on our team. But you guys bring an oversight and you're passionate about going after, you have a leave no one behind sort of grace on your lives. And you go into areas that people would say is overwritten or written off. And you have a, anyone has an opportunity because there's nothing in anybody's life that's exempt from the blood of Jesus and the grace and restoration of Jesus. And so I know you're passionate. We do a lot of outreach initiatives. We do, we just had 12, over 1,100 serve just a few weeks yes. ago. How many of y'all were a part of the one day Houston moment? No. Yeah, we had over 1,100 serving. We had 600 just at one location. So one more time, welcome the barbers to the stage. Share a little bit about your passion because you really do have a, it's never too late for someone to know Jesus sort of perspective. Wow, well, thank you so much. First of all, Hope City fan, what's up? How's everybody? Everybody's looking good today. My wife, Chris, and I, we feel so honored to be a part of this house and part of this church family. How many love your church family? Come on, make some Let's noise go. on that. Yes, yes. We love this. And I want to honor you as our pastors. Man, I want to say, when you say from reaching people from neighborhoods to nations, that's not just a sticky statement, but that is truly the heart of who you are and the heart of this house. And there's hardly anything we'll bring to you saying, hey, we're going to do whatever it takes to go and bring people the hope of Jesus from streets to nations to the world. Whatever it takes, we're going to love people from neighborhoods to nations. So I just wanted to honor you and say thank you. Thank you for how you lead. Thank you for the heart of this house to go and to reach people. I think we can do better than that, Hope City. Come on, can we honor our pastors real quick? I love y'all. This is so awesome. And thank you so much for the kind words. Um, we do. Our passion is, my number one thing is, man, I love telling people about Jesus. It's the best thing in the world. There's, I'm a unique guy. I love to live in three places. Throw me in the streets of our city, helping somebody get off the streets whether they're suffering with addiction or any kind of level of brokenness or whatnot to let them know and remind them that what they think is their worst day can still be their best day with yes. Jesus, right? Yes. Or throw me into the house of God where somebody's marriage feels like it's on the brink of not survival but able to speak hope and life to say, hey, God can restore your marriage. You're going to be greater than you ever imagined it going to be. And then the third place that I love, which is great, throw me in the depths of a prison. Yeah. And you're going to hear everybody say that. But throw me in the depths of a prison, and I'm passionate. It's one of my favorite places to live in the world. And it's and in your lineage. It's, it's who we are. And, and so we have been, my father, I got to honor my dad. I think he's in the house today. He's in the house. Pastor right Mike Barber, I love him. He's Stand over Stand up, here. Mike. I want to see you, sir. You Come got on, the fanciest go. shirt on in the room. See? I love your dad. 
I love him so much. He's a general to me and my best friend in the world. And many of you don't know, he played 10 years in the NFL here with the Houston Oilers. I don't know if I got any old school Love Your Blue fans in the house. Make some noise. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Back in the day with Campbell and those guys, and it was a blast. And then after 10 years in the NFL, uh, he retired from the NFL. He'll tell you how to be delivered from the NFL. I don't know. But uh, went into full-time prison ministry. And been in prison ministry for the last 37 years, traveling wow, the state, the nation, and the world, reaching people for Jesus. In fact, my first message I ever preached, I was 13 years old in prison. I got scared straight, and then I preached the prison. <laughs> preached the med- my whole life, I've been in and out of prison. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all catch that later. But... But, but 37 years to do in prison ministry, the reason why I share that is because prison ministry taught us how to love people. Taught us how to love the person and not the situation. Yeah. Taught us how to let them know that even though the world has given them a number, God still knows them by their name. They got a future and they got a hope. They might be in prison, but prison don't have to be in them. That's so good, man. And I know so many people that are behind those invisible bars. We all struggle with something. And the heart, our passion, our heartbeat is to bring the love of Jesus, to let you know that Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. So good. If we can meet you on your worst day, nobody is on the outreach stretch of the grace of so Jesus. Good. So good. I love it. It's my, it's my passion. And, and y'all just actually got back. Chris, you just yes. preached one of the yes. maximum security women's prisons. And how many did y'all baptize? We baptized 218 women. 218 oh, ladies. Phenomenal. Let's go. Come on. And, and I actually just got these numbers, and we got to celebrate this. This is part of Hope City family. In the first half of the year, doing prison ministry mission trips as Hope City and family. We've had 7,000 men and women give their life to Jesus. Come on, somebody. That's incredible. Let's go. That's amazing. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And you just said it, and, and I'm going to just echo it. Uh, but because of y'all's generosity, and this isn't a, oh, here's where the pastor slips in the asking for money. But y'all really do set the pace mission, that's right. for how many people we're reaching. And we're actually doing mission trips now in prison. How many did y'all take uh, on this last trip? 120. 120. So if you're like, man, I would love to do that. We talked to somebody in between services. She serves, her name's Jasmine. She serves in our kids' ministry. She said, hey, can I dual serve and go and be a part of a prison's mission trip? And the resounding answer is absolutely yes. So there's so many ways that you can serve, and we're so grateful that you guys are a part of our team. It's amazing. Amazing. And the truth is, you cannot listen to either one of them speak and not hear the passion yeah, that the oozes passion. from them for Jesus and for people. He's going to be mad at me later for saying oozes. I'm you so said, sorry that I said, said oozes. You said spews the last service, so. Passion just flows from That's his better. mouth when he speaks about people what? and Jesus. And the important thing to note there is that we shouldn't get caught up on that word, but no. But the important thing is here, the side note, is what you hear in his speech yeah. is relationship. Yes. What you're hearing in that passion is the relationship that he has. If you guys ask me a question about my kids, I'm going to get passionate. You if you ask me a question about my Savior, I'm going to get passionate. Because that's the difference between relationship and religion. And what you're hearing here is passion because they know what God has done in their lives and they don't want one person to get passed over because they may not yet realize it. And what we're talking about this weekend in this stronger aspect of our faith. Every time you say it. I'm so sorry. But we talk about every weekend. Because you can, girl. You can I can't help but flex. Um, Call time's working. Amen. Got the new balance on, the blue socks. I like the whole oh, look today. Hold on. We'll just give him a minute. Okay. He'll come back. <laughs> it's a nice fit today. It's good. And we're matching. The pants are matching. Okay, we're back. Okay. Okay, we're back. Go ahead. So glad. Go ahead. We're fine. So it's glad. Fine. You're okay. Fine. Okay, girl. So, what we're talking about this weekend is the value and understanding and when we are striving to get stronger in Jesus, striving to get stronger in our faith, we can identify passion, right? Y'all, you can see it. We can also recognize purpose in our lives because we can feel it, right? You can feel purpose coming alive. We've been talking about that in this series. And when you take passion and you add it to the purpose within you and you layer that onto the chaos that happens all around us in life. We're faced with something that we don't talk about a whole lot in church. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to talk about it. But what we're faced with is we're faced with a level of exhaustion. 
Because when you have passion and purpose and the chaos of life, if you're not careful, your greatest opportunity will be to become overly exhausted with your life and with what God is calling you to and with what is in front of you. And there's an opportunity that happens. The enemy loves this opportunity. Exhaustion can very easily lead us to a place of burnout. How many of you have ever said that? Like, I'm just burnt out. I'm just, okay. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, yeah. These two are such a great example for us because we can hear the passion. We can hear the drive to go and do all of the things. But the solution that's needed in the body of Christ is how to not face the exhaustion to the point of wanting to quit, wanting to give up. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about that solution. Fatigue. Uh, quiet quitting. These are all things where we start making decisions because we're tired. So we're going to talk about something. We're going to talk about a solution this weekend. I pray you lean in. Yes, ma'am. Because the truth is we can be passionate about the things of God and it not be like a flickering candle. We can run a race really, really well for a really, really long time and not come to our brick wall over and over and over again. And that's where we are. Yes. And the solution, we're going to talk about a word. So we talked, uh, when you preached, you talked about how the word help is not an ugly word. How many of y'all actually reached out for some help after that sermon? You're like, help, I need somebody. Like, you got some help. Okay, nobody. Okay, so They're not going to admit it. They shouldn't be admitting it. It's, I mean, it's I okay. How many of y'all reached out for help? Like, you okay. understand that help is a good thing? Okay, praise God. Good thing. So we're going to talk about a word. Some of y'all, I just, I want you to not, dis- don't disconnect we're going to be talking about a word called rest. We're going to talk about how we are supposed to, as the children of the living God, we're supposed to leave the rest up to him. And there's a word called rest. There's a word scripturally called Sabbath. And we heard the passion from Dentine Ice, Pastor Brandon. (laughs) Smooth as ice. We heard the passion of outreach and missions. Pastor Chris is equally as passionate about another subject, and that is rest and the Sabbath. Can you unpack that a little bit? Absolutely. I'm so passionate about it because I think that we often get it wrong as a society, even as a church. And I have a huge passion for soul care and physical health and mental health, spiritual health, and all of those things so that you can, just like Pastor Jackie said, run the race for a long time time. and be happy while you're doing it. And so we're going to go back to the word because everything that we build our lives on is the word of God, right? So let's go back to Genesis, starting in verse 2. It says, so the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all of his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all of his work and his creation of work. So there's two important important words we're going to break down here. It's rest and holy. And so rest is defined as just stopping, to desist, to refrain. And then he calls it holy, and that's where the Sabbath comes in. This is his solution to our problem, is our Sabbath. But how do we do that? Sabbath is defined as a 24-hour period of time every single week where we stop working and we rest. We stop everything paid and unpaid. And paid is those things that it's what fills our bank account and gets us going to week from week from week. And then the unpaid work are the house chores, the paying of the bills, the running of the errands, which we're still producing, right? We're still doing things when we're doing those things. So when we Sabbath, we stop production, we don't produce, we choose to rest our mind. It is not just shutting down your body and, and stopping what you're doing. It is choosing a mindset of resting in the Lord and adopting the Sabbath yeah. because it is holy. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let me, let me pose a question because I like to do this because we there's, there's a group, maybe this is the way you were wired, and we're going to practically talk about some ways to disconnect and rest. It's scriptural. You just said it. It's, it's holy. But for those who maybe were raised, I was raised, my grandpa would say, well, we'll rest. I'll rest when I'm in the coffin. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Like, that's... 
And we also uh, 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 kind of adapted this, uh, this phrase, and maybe you have like a magnet on the back of your truck that says no days off. Like, if I don't hustle, if I don't keep running faster and harder than everybody else, then I'm not going to make it. I can't afford to stop. The truth is you can't afford not to. And the whole no days off sort of mindset, I get when it comes to hustling, but when you spend time, we had a mentor who told us, when you work hard, that's six days. Six days, you really, really work and focus, and you take that one day of rest off, God will bless you with supernatural strength for the other six days, right? Because he was talking about how when we don't rest, we end up finding ourselves in that burnout, that fatigued sort of state. And so maybe you've never been in that mindset. Maybe it's always been that I'm just gonna work harder, I'm gonna hustle more. When you spend time scripturally and you apply the rest and the Sabbath piece, God will open up doors. Your name is being mentioned in rooms that you haven't even walked into yet. And the presence of God will get you further in life than hustling will. And it's pretty countercultural too, right? It is. Oh yeah, it's counterculture. I mean, the world will say that taking a day off is unproductive. Right. Like like no days the off. You can't you, you gotta hustle, you gotta get a second hustle, you gotta you gotta pay this bill, you gotta do this. The world will tell you that it's weak, but God actually says it's when you rest, it's actually strong. Yeah. Yeah. World says when you take time off, it'll make you weaker, but God says it'll make you help me out stronger. stronger they right? say it's lazy. They say it's lazy. It's like we, we can't do this. And, and it's almost sometimes we get a freak out mode. Like if we don't, if we don't control the narrative, if we don't put our hands to it. I remember even in sports, I'm like, yo, give me the ball. Let me, let me, let me, t- I'm gonna, we're gonna get this play done. We, we want to control it ourselves. But I've actually learned it's stronger when we release things and put it in his hands than it is to hold things and put it in ours. Last time I checked, when I did things myself, my way, God didn't bless it that great. But when I put it in his hands, how many know? He blessed it every time, over sure. and over. So it takes more trust, it takes more faith, and it takes more strength more trust, letting that day go. Faith and strength. And just to be humble when I beat you in horse. Not true. Because tell lies, Pastor. when you release that last shot. We're in the house of God right now. There's no and lying. I made it. But it's a, uh, 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 the all time record uh, uh, is nine should have to sat seven. between them. Uh, 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 so we don't have to deal with their competition during the during so the We're message. talking about rest, we're talking about Sabbath. <laughs> things that you're working in, things that you need to disconnect from. Uh, there was a moment because the truth is we'll miss moments because Maybe you're self-medicating with busyness. Maybe you refuse to rest because the truth is if you slow down, you have to face some things. I remember when Moses, and maybe you've heard me preach this message in Exodus 3, Moses is tending to his father-in-law Jethro's flock, and he has tasks. He is fulfilling his role in his job. Now, he has a whole track record of being hurt, being angry, being lonely, and being tired. And if he would have refused to halt in this moment, write that down if you've not heard that acronym before, never make any major decisions. If you're hurt, angry, lonely, or tired, you can just write the word halt down, H-A-L-T. Moses, tending to his father-in-law's flock, is probably frustrated. He's feeling inadequate. He's feeling overlooked. He's not feeling seen. He's making all kinds of excuses why God can't use him. And then this bush is burning off to the side. Now, it was not uncommon during those days for a lightning strike to hit the dry area of the desert and a wildfire to break out. And then what a good shepherd does is steer. They will take and steer the the, the flock away from the fire. But this specific day, Moses stops, and it says that he turns aside. How many of y'all know the story? Wave at me if you've heard it before. If you're new to the faith, come on, you gotta go to Exodus 3. It's an amazing story says that Moses turned aside. The moment he turned aside out of the bush, God called him by name. But if we're so busy self-medicating and we're busy hustling and never taking a break to just catch our breath and hear the voice of God, you'll never hear him call you by name and say, hey, slow down, I have more for you, but I can't download it to you if you're running this fast and so out of the burning bush God begins to speak into Moses and what does he do he takes him from a broken place and he changes the entire trajectory of his life and writes victory in his story yeah that's so good it's a powerful moment I think it's as good you can clap because I think when we take those moments when we look at what the word says when we look at those times like with Moses and we he recognize drew, he drew away from his business yeah. and the thing that he was doing was a good thing 
He was doing his tasks. He was doing what he was entrusted to do. Yeah, he was yeah. doing what he knew to do, and he was good at it. But he was in the midst of his plan. Yeah. And God interrupted that plan. How many of you know so often we can feel a little bit of a nudging from the Lord or like we should go and do something else. We should pause what we're in the midst of. And we say, oh, but I gotta keep going. I gotta finish this. I'm, I'm supposed to be here and doing this. But had Moses not done that, he would have missed out on the next 40 years of God changing the entire entire trajectory of his life, changing the entire life of the nation of Israel because he would not have turned away just to stop and draw near to the presence of God. Because the principle of rest, this biblical principle of rest, it calls for us to do two things at the same time. It calls for us to both disengage in the busyness of our normal everyday life, our normal rhythms, and choose to engage in the relationship with God. Choose to set aside and draw near to the heart of God. And that is why the word actually calls this Sabbath time holy. Because God called it holy. So if God says it's holy, then we should say it's what? We should say it's holy. But the reason that it's holy for us is because we choose to acknowledge God. It's our choices that acknowledge the holiness in it. So when we say, I choose to separate myself from over here, all these things that I have going on and connect with what you are doing, God, with what you have for me, the rest and fulfillment I find in you, that is where God kicks in in the supernatural And it's so important that we choose both of those. Absolutely. So it's so true that we have to choose it, but we choose it because it was modeled for us, right? Right. He modeled it in his word. So if we go to Exodus 20 and verse 8, um, it says, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and foreigners living among you. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the seventh day and set it apart as holy. So God worked, we're to work. God rested, we're to rest, right? That is how he created it. He created things in cycles and rhythms. There's day and night and sunrise and sunset and seasons, fall, all those things. He created them in cycles and rhythms. And so if we understand that model, it'll be a little bit easier for us. Because it's not about rituals. It's not about practices. It's not about legalism. So we get hung up in, on the practice side of it, we won't catch the rhythm, the cadence. I actually preached a message here, and I'm not bragging uh, about this stat, but it's amazing that the number one most watched Hope City sermon of all time is a message from a, couple, a few years ago called The Rhythm of Rest. It's something we all desire. We all Wave at me if you need some rest. Some of y'all are like, I, if I could get a nap right now, amen, I would take it. Later, later today. Later, not right now. Y'all stay awake. Hey, elbow the person next to you and say, wake up. Come on. Yeah. No, we're not saying rest right now. No, no, yeah. Right. Wake up. I, I love this acronym of the word rest. Your boy loves acronyms. And I love the R. It stands for rehydrate. On this Sabbath day, it's a day for you to allow God to fill you up to a place because what fills, spills. It's a time to rehydrate spirit, soul, mind, body. The E is to uh, eat something good. Come on, where's all the foodies at? Come on, you're like, that's something that maybe on that day you put it in your budget to maybe check out something that's a little different than the Hungry Man dinners in the Hot Pockets. (laughs) The S is to step outside. So many times we are so busy in our day-to-day work environment that we don't just step outside. You're like, you don't understand my allergies. Just step (laughs) outside. Step outside and look at creation and look at all that God has done. And then the T is to talk to someone. We talked a few weeks ago about it's okay to ask for help. That is a great opportunity for you to schedule in maybe a counseling moment, a moment to call a friend, a mentor, a leader. We talk all the time at Hope City 
You should have somebody pouring into you, you pouring into someone else, and then people that are standing with you. That T is to talk to someone. Don't do life alone. The enemy loves isolation. He would love for you on your rest days to turn off the lights, pull down the blinds, and binge watch something on Netflix. Rehydrate, eat something good, step outside and talk to somebody. That's great. But the truth is, we might be able across the room to, to identify and say, I could use some rest, but nobody's out there Googling how to get better rest. I mean, unless you're buying new pillows and new mattresses, like for the pillow. most part, that's just sleep. We're talking about rest. There is a difference. But for the most part, we find ourselves caught in these cycles and these rhythms of yeah. life where we literally just run, run, go, 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 run, 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 go. And we don't ever find ourselves understanding that we're lacking rest. We're lacking that intentional rhythm. And I think one thing that is true about life is that we all live around patterns in our lives. We get Absolutely. good patterns, bad patterns, healthy patterns, unhealthy patterns, disciplined ones, undisciplined ones. Toxic patterns. Toxic ones. But ultimately, our rhythms represent what we allow in our lives versus what we create our lives around. Well, that's good. Our rhythms, they represent, when we look at our life, we look at the cycle of how we live and how we run. That's great. Those rhythms represent what we either just allow to happen in our lives or the patterns that we create on purpose. And I love the way that you talk about rhythms. I love, I love the two different types of rhythms that you give example yes. to. So we have, a, a, there's a secular rhythm. This is the worldly rhythm, the way that a lot of us do. And that is... Work, 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 vacation. Work, 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 fly to New York for three days. Work, 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 Galveston. go to Austin. Galveston, yes. It's just doing, doing, working, going, running all the time. That's why Rihanna wrote that song, work, 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 work. It wasn't our cue. Don't sing that. Sorry. Yeah. I'm Don't so sing sorry. That. Don't I apologize. Sing that. Then we have, we have a sacred rhythm, which the Father, the Lord, um, models for us in his word, and that is Sabbath work. Sabbath oh, that's good. work. Sabbath work. Sabbath and work. And that's because we work from our rest. We don't rest from our work. Yeah. We have to work word. from our rest. Otherwise, we're going to be on empty all the time, exhausted and overwhelmed. Does anyone remember, like, finals week or, or if you have a... Right? Man, so glad I'm out of college. But good for you if you're still in college. That's amazing. <laughs> I remember finals week or having a major project at work and, and just in my mind, I'm like, I just got pushed through. I'm going to push through and finish, right? And then it ends up having like, I get a C on the paper or a D on the test because I just push through instead of stopping and resting yeah. and regrouping yeah. Yeah. and identifying what really needs to happen, yeah. right? And so that's where we are. We have to work from our rest, not rest I from our rest. I love that line. Yeah. We have to work from We're all our trying rest. to interrupt that because that's, no, that's so good. Line. Because I also think that we typically take a break when we just can't physically move anymore. Just fall into bed yes. on our day off. And that's just not the way the Lord intended for us yeah. to do it. So good. You got to find a rhythm to it. Come on, everybody say rhythm. Rhythm. You got to find, and uh, the Bible actually speaks to it. Matthew 11, verse 28. Then Jesus said, how many know it's important if Jesus said it, right? Come on, right? <laughs> he said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdens, and I will give you, everybody shout it out, every camper. I will give you rest. And he's saying, find the rhythm of life and work in coming to me to refresh your spirit. Come on, how many can use a refreshing with your spirit? Come on, anybody? Like, I love the heart of God. He says, but I'm going to give it to you. Like, I'm ready to give you peace. I'm ready to give you joy. But you find it when you rest, which lets us know, like, if you want to find the rhythm of rest, you got, it, it requires some planning. And I preach this, I don't know how many times, but I think repetition is key. That God is not a forcer. He's a filler. And this verse is key, because this is, then Jesus said, come to me. We, we love reading it. We're like, that's great. All who are weary, that's, yep, carry heavy burdens, check, okay? Come to me is a choice. Because if we're so busy, self-medicating with more busyness, and you never pause, pray, spend time in his presence, he's saying, hey, uh, you have access to rest. You have access to peace. You have access to wisdom and clarity. All these things, Matthew 6, when you seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, all yeah. these things. How much? All. 
all these things. That's everything you need when you need it. But the key here, the very beginning of this verse, is come to yeah. me. So, so the first part, because this is key, is rest requires planning. planning. Oh, I cannot say it more. Rest requires planning. It's it does. so, so true. We have four kiddos. We're in a very busy stage of life with busy. all our activities. And so it gets chaotic sometimes. And I can tell you that if I don't plan, rest in my Sabbath does not happen. It doesn't happen. So on a practical level, I'm ordering groceries the day before. I'm doing laundry the day before because I don't like piles of laundry around my house um, or unfolded clothes. I clean the night before. I know some of us can sit and be totally fine with doing it the next morning. I, I can't sit in a messy home, so I'll stay up a little later the night before and I'll clean my house because that's how my mind is at rest. I don't plug in my computer on my Sabbath day, even to charge it for the next work week. I love my work, but it when I do that, it gets my mind going back to a place of all the things I have to do yeah. versus staying in a mindset of rest. And so I encourage you guys to examine, like, what are the things I'm doing that are taking my mind out of the rest stage? I love that, because you were like, you don't want to do dishes on that day. I don't want to do That whole dishes. pile of laundry. Do Nobody wants to do dishes. Come on. There's not we, a day I want to do dishes. Can we just agree? Anybody not them. like dishes? Come on. Anybody? Like it's really good for our 14-year-old son to learn discipline, though. It is true. Yeah. So Paper Great plates and toys. Oh, I do those <laughs> dishes. <laughs> so it requires planning, which I think that was some pretty intentional, uh, uh, detailed, specific, like you were like, you know, like piled up laundry. That was very convicting for a lot of people. Um, they were like, oh, shoot, this whole message is for me. All right, so rest requires planning. The other thing rest requires, you can write this down, rest requires we stop. We stop trying to do everything in our own strength. Stop trying to tackle all the week's obligations, all the things that we are trying to fit in and trying to get it all in. We have to, it requires us to stop. Psalms 23, it says that the good shepherd makes us. He, he takes us by still waters and makes us, that's the line, makes us lie down next to still waters because your body won't lie. Eventually, it will catch up with you if you're not getting rest. But it requires us to stop. I remember one of our mentors, we actually named Fox. His middle name is after this gentleman. And he texts me. The timing of this was, was unbelievable. He's a prophet, though. So he texted me, and he was like, I'm starting to not believe that you keep your word. I was like, oh, my Lord. Like, this is a very heavy text. And I was like, why? What's going on? He's like, you told me you would call me like a month ago. And, of course, my response was, I'm so sorry. I've been so busy. How many of y'all have ever done that before? I'm so sorry I didn't respond. I'm so, I'm so busy. Well, I remembered flashback about two years ago. We were super busy because, you know, it never stops. Life keeps coming. Every day's a new adventure. Every day's a new challenge. And I remember back then he said, hey, you have to figure out your pace, your cadence. You have to figure out how to rest. And my response then was, I know, I just have so much I have to do. I'm just so busy. And he said, well, then you're busier than God wants you to be. Because if you don't have time to take Jackie on a date, then you're busier than God wants you to be. If you have, don't have time to sit down and play with your kids, then you're busier than God wants you to be. If you don't have time to pray, read your Bible, spend time in his presence, then you are busier than God wants you to be. So it's really important. Rest requires us to stop. Pause, pray, and be patient. So on the Sabbath, we embrace our limits. I would even say, let's welcome our limits on our Sabbath. Here's why, because God is on the throne, yeah, right? Sure. Yep. He is on the throne. He is running the universe without our help already. And so it's all going to be fine if we choose to take a 24-hour period and rest our bodies and our spirits and our minds. And before you say, but I have to send those couple of emails, I have to do those through, the, the, the lawn needs to be mowed, all those things. Guys, listen, first of all, God gave you the opportunity to be in that job and that position. He gave you the business idea. He gave you all of those things already. So don't you think he 
he knows how it will, what it will take in order for you to do all of those things in a healthy rhythm and in a healthy balance. We have to embrace our limits and know what takes us too far and makes us too exhausted. So the core spiritual issue um, that revolves around us actually stopping is our trust in God. Do we actually trust him to take care of everything? everything? Do we actually trust him for that? Because so much of the time, we think that if we don't do it, it's not going to get done, right? I've ever had that thought. Like, I'm the only one that sees it. If I don't do it, if I don't do it nobody, nobody will do will. it. <laughs> it will never happen if I don't do it. We are all guilty at some point of having that thought. But how many of you know that when we have those thoughts, we're excluding God's sovereignty in the midst of it? Wow. We're excluding his care for us in the midst of it. We're excluding that he promised to take care of us and called us to this place of rest. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So we can't see all the things that God is at work doing, but if we never get out of the way and just let him work, we definitely will not see as many things that he desires to so do good. in our lives yep. because we're in the way, y'all. Yeah. So one thing that's important to us is not only that we teach all of the biblical principles and everything out of the word, but when we teach you the word, we also want to help you understand how to apply it. So the question that must follow then is, what are some of these things that you both do to rest? Because I know that a lot of us, when we think about resting, we think about um, maybe laying in bed all day and catching up on Netflix, but I don't think that's actually the rest that God was talking about when he cr made creation, right? He probably wasn't talking about it Netflix. It is nice, though. In the beginning. Some skinny pop. <laughs> sure. In a Netflix show. Y'all, I think that he, he likes Skinny Pop because he can eat an entire bag of it. Amen. And he just likes to call it Skinny. <laughs> so he can eat the whole bag. That is how he rests with a bag of Skinny Pop. But how about you guys? It's a guilt free That's a snack. Like skinny pop. How do you? A guilt free snack. What do you practically do to apply, aside from Skinny Pop, the principle of rest? What we practically do, and, and, the, and there's something wrong with catching up on your favorite series. It brings your body rest, but what, are, what else are you doing yeah, yeah, to yeah. bring your spirit and your mind rest? And so something that we do to bring our spirit and our mind rest is we discover what we delight in, what brings our souls joy, right? We, so when God created the heavens and the earth and then he was finished, what did he say? He said, it's very good. Like, that's great. Like, he, he celebrated the accomplishment of the creation. And so we take time yeah. to celebrate right. all the amazing things that we're, see, that we're seeing and experiencing all those things. And so I love to go on walks. That's something that delights, that gives me joy in my heart and that I delight in. I grew up in the country, so I want to be outside. And so I'll go on a walk, and about it takes me about 10 minutes to kind of disengage from life. But then it'll, it'll kick in. I will look up. I will see the sun coming through the trees, I will take a deep breath, and I literally just feel the presence of God wrap around me, and my mind is at rest, and when we're on our walks together, I'm telling, we're like, babe, did you see who had a baby this week, or, or so-and-so got married, or, or after Freedom Encounter, we talked for hours, because people were coming up and telling us all of the life change, and y'all went through freedom, come on, yeah, amazing. It's amazing. So we delight and we celebrate those things, and uh, I love to be outside. It's a day that brings joy. We turn it into a day of joy and celebration because even if it's a bad day, been a bad week or a bad season, come on, anybody been there? Come on, okay. I'll try to get a bunch of lies. Been come on, anybody been there? Right, here yeah, we go. She's like, yeah, there we go. Okay, anybody been, had a bad day, bad week, a bad season? Come on, where are you at? Okay. okay, there we go. Now we're telling the truth. All right, but how many would agree it's hard to take a bad day and try to bring joy into it to make it a good day, right? But we take pride in this on our Sabbath and on our rest. We make it a day of celebration and a day of joy because, like she said, it said in the Bible, God said after he created Christians, he said, he said, look and see that it is good. 
He set the tone. God set the example of rest. And then you got Adam, the very first to follow that example. Could you imagine Adam? God tells Adam, hey, go, take dominion of the earth. Man, be fruitful, multiply. So for six days, Adam's just grinding, doing his thing. He's doing everything he can, tending the yard, tending the crops, uh, getting his best Swiss family Robinson. I don't, I don't know. He's just going, he's Three working houses, hard. Whatever. Three houses, all that. He's working, he's working hard. And the seventh day, he wakes up, and he says, all right, God, what's on the docket now? And God says, hey, I just need you to rest. He's like, hey, wow, I've done nothing. He goes, exactly. I need you to rest in doing nothing so that you can see that I've taken care of everything. And I think there's beauty in that. That's great. I think there's beauty in God is going to bless your rest. But then also when you rest, it allows you to see all the good things all the that good God things. has done in your life. And I guarantee you, every person in the room, if you looked back on this last year, you've had way more good days than you've had bad days. If you don't take time to rest, so you true. won't see the good that God has done in your life. And so we practically take that day because the word teaches us that. We'll, we'll tailor with our kids. Whether it's a bad day, whether our kids are driving us cray-cray or not, I don't know. We're going to make it into a good day. Come on, any we parents out there? It, guys. Sometimes we have to fight for the joy. We have to fight, for, fight the for the delight. But when we start sharing stories of celebration, I mean, look how blessed we are. Look where God has brought us. Let's th tell us about a friend who blessed you today. Yeah, it's so it's amazing how it brings joy, strength, and peace to your soul every single time. Bad day, bad week, bad season, but an attitude of gratitude can change right. it. Yeah. It can change the moment where you look around. We sing these songs. In the morning, I say, you are good. In the evening, I say, you are good, you are good to me. And you're like, yeah, but I've had a bad day, I've had a bad week, I've had a bad season. But in the morning I say you are good. Because here's the truth, an attitude of gratitude, when you allow the joy of the Lord, not your joy, but the joy from God to you and through you, the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8, 10, becomes your strength. Which brings us to our fourth and final point. Rest requires, watch this, that we remember that's why we do our first 20 challenge. The first five minutes in the word, five minutes in prayer, five minutes in worship. Then we take five minutes to simply remember. Close your eyes for just a moment. Some of y'all right now are living in a season out of the overflow of prayers you prayed for a year ago, three years. Think about prayers you prayed a year ago that you're living in now. Thanking God right now that he kept you, he didn't run out on you when others abandoned you, when others lied to you. God, we woke up again today, we're breathing, which is proof you're not done with us yet. So we simply take a snapshot, inventory of our lives, and we remember all that you've done, that diagnosis that got reversed, or I walked through it, and maybe you didn't deliver me before the fire, but you plucked us up out of the middle of the fire. You allowed Daniel to sleep amongst the lions, which proves that we can take a nap. Come on, rest, amen. But God, we thank you. We simply remember all that you've done. Look at me real quick. It's easy to get caught up in where you're at now. And the enemy will try to get in your head that you're never gonna get through this season. So my God, don't rest, don't stop. But listen, in this moment, trust him even when you can't fully track him. And remember everything that he's done. Rest will require, it will require you to remember all the good things. I was, uh, we, we went the other day, she makes me go to places like furniture stores to look for things. Yeah. And it's not 30 minutes or 45 minutes. It's a premium four it has hours. We've got to look at all of them, sit on them, touch but them They had all. a play area, which was cool. It was fun. They wouldn't let me in. So he went um, to the play zone, and I looked I went the to the little cafe, because if coffee's my favorite color. So I was talking to this girl. Uh, she was making my drink, and, and she, she made me a latte. And I said, how's your day going? She said, man, this whole year has been awful. She said, we're almost at six months, and I can't wait for it to already be over. And I said, look at me real quick. I said, I came in today to buy what ended up one of the worst lattes yeah. I've ever had. <laughs> I've been invited to Maxwell's house, and it is gross. I said, this is not the best part of waking up. Folgers in my cup. I can keep going. All right. Good. But I said, I, I feel like my wife made me come here today, look for this furniture, but I came here to look at you in the eyes and tell you, look, hey, today is going to be a great day. And she's like, <laughs> and when she looked up, she smiled. She said, I kind of believe you. <laughs> and I said, you know what? This week is going to be a phenomenal week. I said, like a blank canvas, begin to paint 
on the canvas of your life. Because the Bible says in Job 22, 28, it says, have you ever been to church before? She says, I was raised in church. I was like, girl, you know better. <laughs> Job 22, 28 says to speak life. So say this out loud with me. Say, I'm going to have an amazing day. I said, say, say out loud, I'm going to have an amazing week. Amazing week. June's going to be a phenomenal month. June's going to be a phenomenal I'm not moved by the economy. Oh. I'm not moved by the economy. Or by the uh, avocado prices. <laughs> or by the avocado. I don't know what that last was. That was a little more personal, but. <laughs> Just like guacamole. But I said, you can find joy. I said, has God ever done anything good for you? She said, lots of things. I said, so next time when somebody asks you, how's your day going? You know what? I got a lot to be thankful thankful for. So come on. How many of y'all can be thankful? We just simply remember all that God has done. And that is the beauty of choosing to disengage our minds. That is the beauty of just stopping the kind of hamster wheel. Because when we do that, yes. when all of the bad day, bad season, bad year stops for a moment, then you can really, truly let the refreshing of the Lord in to remind you of what you have to remember, of what you have to remember about his faithfulness, of what you have yes. to be grateful for in the midst of your life. Even if it feels like you're surrounded with all those ugly things, God can still give you an amazing day, an amazing year, an amazing month in yes. the midst of it when you have a refreshed mind that is tuned in with the heart of God. Isaiah 24, verse 1. One, it's on the screens. It says, oh, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I said this last week. I'll praise you now, and you can do it later, because I remember all that you've done. So you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Come on, somebody. Plans, purposes, things of old, faithful and sure to complete work started in my life. In Psalms 119, verses 24 says, your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. When we think about the love of God and we think about the foundation of what we build our lives upon, our faith, it is the central focus of our rest and our Sabbath. Yes, the love of God is the central focus of our Sabbath, thinking on it. And it's because we were created as human beings, not human doings. If he wanted us to be human doings, that's what he would call us. But we're human beings and not human doings. And our job is not just to do, 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 do all of the time. And uh, I, growing up, I'm sure we all know that person that just worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they had a goal and they reached it. But when I, when I think about that person and they're in their 60s and 70s, I would not say that person is necessarily happy. I would not say they're enjoying their time here on earth. That's because we were created to be with him and to be in his presence. And he gives us six days to accomplish all those things. But on the seventh day, just spend time in a mindset of rest with our heavenly father. And don't, don't get your title and your identity all wrapped up in what you do, right? Just decide that you're going to be a, a son of the Most High King and a daughter of the Most High King, and you're going to be with your Savior. So good. Amen. That's so good. So I hope this is a challenge for you, a great challenge for you, because I hope that you can see and hear that we can live in the midst of great passion and purpose and not feel absolutely burnt to the crisp at the end of every day. We don't have to have lost all of our way every single day if we choose to be intentional with rest. So the very first part is remember, it requires planning on our parts. Everything that we do yeah. has to be done intentionally. We cannot wait for just that moment where the, the stop seems natural because we have to choose yeah. to yeah. stop. It requires us to stop. But so often we think, I'll stop when things seem to lighten up, when there's a natural pause. How many of you know there's never a natural pause? Mm -hmm. Like there's never a good spot where you're like, I've got time, like I have time now. Anybody waiting for me who also has time? No, because nobody ever just sits around very often and says, I've got time. We have to choose to stop. And then we have to choose to find our delight 
That's two parts. We first delight in the Lord always, but on our rest and in our Sabbath, we linger in worship. Worship a little longer, y'all. Pray a little longer. Get up maybe a little bit sooner if you have kiddos and give yourself a little more time alone with the Lord. So good. Get in the Word a little bit longer. Those questions that you always feel like are a little unanswered. Give him a little longer to answer them in your heart and then understand what you delight in. So often, we don't even really know the thing that brings us great peace in life because we stay so busy. Everybody right where you are, take a deep breath in and blow it out slowly. Y'all know what that feels like to feel peace. So what are the things that we can do in our own lives that bring us that kind of peace where we can stop for a minute and just breathe? Just stop and breathe. It is not silly to realize that you need it. We were designed to rest. We were designed to work, to be effective, to accomplish great things for the kingdom of God, to be on mission. But we were designed to rest yes. as well. And then we choose to remember our rest causes us to be grateful for the heart of God and all that he has done. And how many of you know you've heard us say it once, twice, a million times. If he has done it before, he will do it what? Do it he will do it again. And when we choose to be grateful, we find ourselves in a spirit of rest. So good. Amen. How many of you say, I am going to work towards a rhythm of rest where we work from rest instead of rest? rest because we got just absolutely worn out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all close your eyes for just a moment. Now, Pastor Chris pray over us in just a second. The last one was remembering. Remembering all that God has done. Can you just again take a snapshot, take inventory. Before she prays, I want you to just pause. Just allow the Spirit of God to just begin to rest on you. God, rest on our marriages, rest on our families. Rest on our businesses. Rest on the week that's ahead. Rest on that diagnosis that is causing so much anxiety and fear. Rest, God, on that situation, that addictive issue that has been robbing peace and feels hopeless. Areas of our lives, God, that are hopeless, we know have been under the influence of a lie because we know that hope has a name and it's Jesus foundation of everything comes back to building our lives upon the rock, and that is you, the cornerstone of our life. That's where real rest comes from. So God, our prayer today is that every person at the sound of our voice across every campus, those watching online, will begin to lean into your, align themselves into, uh, align to your heart, God, and lean into your presence, God, so they can truly walk out with rest today in the rhythm of rest. Pastor Chris, would you pray? Father, we're so grateful for who you are in our lives and for what you've done. We're so grateful for your faithfulness. Father, as we lean into taking inventory and as we walk this out the next couple of weeks, Father, remind us of this message and, and how to rest and what that looks like with planning and how to stop and, and what do we delight in and, and all of the remembering of the things that you've done. Father, remind us of the evidence of how you have brought us so far, of all the little miracles that you have brought us through, Father, and that we can see on a daily basis. Father, if we need more trust in you to lean back and let you take care of everything, Father, we pray for more trust to put every single thing in your hands because you do it better than us anyway. So we put those things in your hands. Father, we give you all the glory and honor knowing that our whole lives will revolve around this rest and your presence and, and knowing that you're taking care of every single thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all get something out of week number four of Stronger. Come on, can we honor the barbers for being a part? If you'll remain seated for just a moment before we wrap, we have baby dedications today, which is incredible. We have over 170 babies about to get prayed over today, which is amazing. How many of y'all are grateful you're out of the baby season? Okay, all right. But the reason we do all of this, the reason we gather, if you want real rest, you would say, Daniel, here's the truth. I, I need rest. 
Jackie, I need rest. The foundation, when we leave the rest up to him, the foundation begins with, the answer ends with Jesus. With every eye closed just for a moment, nobody moving around just for a moment, watching online, if you want to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you can say yes and our team will help you. I'm going to give two invitations. The first is first time salvation. I, I've never known him as my personal Lord and Savior, but today I want to know him for the very first time. The Bible says in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. The second invitation is maybe you've fallen away. Maybe you got caught up in the prodigal life. Maybe you would say, Daniel, here's the truth. I used to know rest. I used to know hope. I used to walk with Jesus, but I got caught up in my own agenda. And today I want to come back and fall in the arms of God. I want to rededicate my life. Whether you're the first invitation, you want to give your life to Jesus, or you're the second invitation, you want to rededicate your life across every campus and watching online. When I hit three, I want you to boldly lift up your hand and say, today's my day. One, I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, I want to rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, and you, and you, and you, and you in the middle. I see you back here waving at me. Come on, y'all. Give God praise. I saw you in the back. I see you. I see you. I see you. Let's go. Somebody give God praise. This is huge. I saw you, my friend. Here's what we're going to do. Everybody, let's pray this prayer together. You can join us online as well. Say this out loud. Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me. It's not working. I have no rest. All the shame, all the burdens, and all my sin that I've been trying to carry in my own strength, I lay it at your feet and I ask for forgiveness. Thank you for hanging on that cross, giving up your life so that I could live free. Thank you for getting up out of the grave so that I could have a life of more abundance, hope, and live a life of joy. From this moment on, I'm choosing to live for you. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, let's give God praise.